Good morning. Welcome to the Universalist Meeting House in Springfield. For over 200 years, we have been preaching love and free and responsible search for truth and meaning. Here, we don't expect to think alike, but to love alike. We invite you to join us in seeking truth and sharing our love with our neighbors. My name is Bill Brink, and I am one of the trustees. If you're a guest with us today, we invite you to simply enjoy being with us. You are welcome to join us after the service for refreshments and conversation. And conversation. Yeah. Um, does anybody have a guest they wish to introduce? Or our guests who wish to introduce themselves? Please take note of the announcements printed in the order of service. Are there any other announcements that are in the order of service that anybody would like to bring to our attention? We'll have announcements at the end. Okay. Just please remember to silence your cell phone and enjoy the service. words that you get to join in with. You all have here in the sanctuary and at home on Zoom a part to play. And let's just run through what your part is. These are the words. It is possible to live in peace. So I will read a piece, and then I will go like this. And that's your cue to say it is possible to live in peace. Got it? So let's try that. I go like, I, I'm going to finish saying, be turned into the summer of hope. It is, it is possible to live in peace. So we'll have several of those. You have your part. Okay. If someone with courage and vision can rise to lead in nonviolent action, the winter of despair can, in the twinkling of an eye, be turned into the summer of hope. It is, it is possible, possible to live in peace. peace. Nonviolence is not a garment to be put on and off at will. Its seat is in the heart, and it must be an inseparable part of our being. It is possible, possible to live in peace. Nonviolence which is a quality of the heart, cannot come by an appeal to the brain. It is a plant of slow growth, growing imperceptibly, but surely. It is possible to live in peace. If a single person achieves the highest kind of love, it will be sufficient to neutralize the hate of millions. It is possible to live in peace. 
If we are to reach real peace in this world, and if we are to carry on a real war against war, we shall have to begin with the children. It is possible to live in peace. The future depends on what we do in the present. I invite you all to join with me in saying the words of our affirmation. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest of truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer to dwell together in peace, to see knowledge in freedom, to serve the need of all beings, to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other and with the source of our being. So, our story for all ages I will be talking from my own personal experience, but I'm betting that each one of you has similar stories. It's looking back at my childhood and maybe even some of my adulthood to having a secret place. And I'm talking about outside. Maybe there was a secret place in your home as well, but you know, some spot outside. Um, even from the time I lived in an apartment building in Quebec City, I was able to find a little natural spot not far away. But most of the time I lived where there was some little creek or a little bit of woods or some little natural spot. Um, that I, I would just, I don't know how I thought that. Is it something innate in us that needs that? When I, when my brother was bugging me and I needed to get away from him and find a little spot to go to, I built a little fort out back when we lived in Bethesda, just with old branches and sticks and sort of tied with string to a tree and branches and I could go back there. When I lived in Quebec City, they uh, had torn down an old house right next to our apartment building, ready to build a big, a big building there. It was a medical center later. But for a year or two, there was a big rhubarb patch that survived. How many old homesteads have, have had rhubarb patches? It was kind of ubiquitous like lilac bushes, at least in the Northeast. Um, and the rhubarb thrived and it was big enough that I could go and hide in it. And, you know, just sit there, chill, know that I was in my own space, it was peaceful. And uh, when I was good and ready, I'd go back home. Maybe it was time for a meal. And the lure of food brought me back. And uh, I wonder, any of you have had a secret spot? You can just raise your hand if you did, yeah. Yeah, I see hands going up. I invite you to think about that spot. And there might be a time later that we can hear from you about it. And what did that mean to you? So later in my life, I think it was after my kids had grown, you know, when you're raising kids, your life is busy. But later on, I thought back to having that kind of secret place. 
And guess what I decided I needed? Once a year, at least, to climb a tree. Any of you climb a tree lately? <laughs> no. Well, I, I have to admit that I found a tree that's really easy to climb up it. It's a, this big old apricot tree in my yard that you, you have to kind of climb up a little bit, but the split in the trunk is about way down here. So it's really not that hard to get up in. Facebook reminded me yesterday that I had posted a picture from maybe four years ago of my granddaughter Tilia and I up in a tree. Somehow we had pictures of both of us up in the tree. Um, and I, I thank uh, her for that youthful spirit encouraging me to get up there. And I have to say, even just going up a little bit changed my perspective, both Physically, you know, you're up a little higher, you see things a little differently. And it's like, yeah, I still got it. I can climb up in a tree. So that connection with the tree, with, you know, the natural world, and it felt really good. I have not yet done it this year. Maybe this afternoon I'll go home and climb up in that tree and I'll have to take a picture and show you later. I actually did it. Um, so I invite you to consider whether it's climbing up in a tree or sitting next to it and leaning up against it or some other place that is a special place to you. Maybe you've kind of forgotten about it. Or maybe it's time to find a new spot that you can just go sit in now and then when you feel the need. So that's my story about secret places. And I bet there isn't a single person here who hasn't done that at some point in their lives. And that leads us to the next reading, which I'm guessing you're all familiar with, one of my favorite, and I'm sure many others' favorite writers, Wendell Berry. Echoing the theme of my secret place. When despair for the world grows in me and I wake in the night at the least little sound, in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light for a time I rest in the grace of the world and am free. I'm so touched every time I read that, that poem. The choir has prepared for us meditation on grieving. When I 
such a pretty song. I just love it. Of course, I've sung it many times, and I, I know the different parts, and it just touches my heart. So, a reflection on peace. It's a very big topic, and I'm not taking on the whole of the meaning of peace. I want to turn back to what Wendell Berry says. When despair for the world grows in me. And for what I'm really wanting to look at is for each of us individually, when despair for the world grows in you, in us, what do we do? It's so easy in the days of being bombarded with all kinds of media, with news that's happening around the world, or maybe even in our own backyard, that's hard to hear. War and drought and flood and earthquakes, and these are common occurrences these days. And maybe we build up some sort of wall so that it doesn't affect us too much when we hear these things. But sometimes it gets through and my heart is hurt. Or as Wendell Berry says, despair grows in me. You know, if you're not in despair, you're not paying attention, to paraphrase that bumper sticker. But how do we how do we get back to center? And I know that our our church, our community has looked at many, many ways that we can stay balanced, stay centered, um, how we can be loving, turn off 
the media for a bit and go out for a walk in nature or meditate or you know all these different techniques but i still need it just about every day so the story of wendell berry and talking about a secret place um, what are the ways that we all can come back to center, come back to balance, come back to that place where we can maybe be a little more effective in creating the world that we want. I would really like to ask for your help, your ideas. What thoughts do you have? What do you do? Do you turn on a certain kind of music? Do you go for a walk? Do you call a friend? Um, I invite anybody who wants to, to come up so we can hear and see you and uh, share with us, what do you do? Or tell us about your secret place. Is anything stirred in you? This morning. <clears throat> Dick, you got a thought? Well, only that I think about history and times when it was worse. Um, can you folks on Zoom hear Dick okay? No. Ann says no. Could you uh, come up? If you could come up here, then the mic on the camera can capture you better. Oh, so you want me to see it? Yeah. I don't think what I said was very helpful, but uh, I think about history and times when things were a lot worse, and there are quite a few such times. Yeah, I, I feel like that and myself and probably many people here are actually very privileged and I don't, I live, we live in a lovely, calm, beautiful place here and historically things have not been good for many people around the world and we don't suffer that. So I just appreciate what I have here and now. Great, thank you. I've had a lot of fun during during your uh, presentation, sharing about I thought you speak up a little. I've had a lot. Well, I've had a lot of fun since uh, Sharon spoke about her secret place. I have many at different times in my life. I have a secret. Well, it's not so much a secret place because I post it all the time on Facebook. <laughs> my my front porch, <laughs> sitting out on my front porch and just looking out. It's especially when the sun is coming up or going down, it's such a comfort. And I remember, you know, talking about peace. I remember how awful 9 11 was, and seeing that on television and being in a state of shock. And the world has changed since that, especially for us in America, here in the United States. And I remember looking around, I looked at my cat. My cat was so peaceful. I mean, nothing bothered the cat. He was just running around as well, little creature around the house. It hadn't changed. But I looked out the window and the trees were still beautiful. And um, it's the, the rest of the world seemed to be at peace. Why can't we be at peace? You know, I would ask myself that. Why can't we be at peace? Why do we do this? And uh, where we can learn from the, our natural world. And another thought that came to me was uh, ancient people had secret places and they were very sacred. And they built temples on these places and honored these places. And they still do, even whole mountains uh, are sacred to them. So there is a source of peace 
in the in these places and within these other within these other wild creatures. That's that's the, my thoughts. Thank Sharon. you, Tony. I'd just like to add that we saw a photograph of Tony's secret place this morning during one of our songs. Um, and I'll share it with you again right now so we can all be in Tony's space with her just for a moment. Oh. Hey. We love your photographs, Tony. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Thank <laughs> Is there anyone else who would like to say something and maybe not come up? I, I'll repeat it. Yep. Anyone? I, I can share something about a secret place. Um, when I was in high school, I, I lived on an island out in the middle of nowhere in the Pacific Ocean. And um, I had a place that I used to go to when I was really upset. So mom, you're going to be hearing this and you're going to go, that's where she was. Um, there was a big, big, beautiful rock that was on on the, the ocean side of the island. Um, that was that was covered with beautiful um, a plant that looks a lot like a morning glory but isn't a morning glory so I'll just call it a tropical morning glory and it was covered with flowers and the, you know the ocean would come in and the sound was just so wonderful and it was such a you know the shh, shh, you know of the waves and, and I could just go there and breathe and uh it it was it was such a special place and i almost never saw anybody there um but one day i went to my secret place and i found a friend of mine that wasn't really a close friend it was just somebody i knew um, who was having a very hard time and um he was in the ocean and he was he was leaving and I pulled him out and he was failing out of his senior year of high school. He was failing a class that we all hated. It was called expository writing and it was really tough. And um, I helped him write his paper. And from then on, it was not just my secret place. Paul and I used to be there all the time. And so it was a shared secret place, but it's a really, really special place. And whenever I close my eyes, I can envision that space and that rock on that beach. It was really, 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 really special. And I'm so grateful that it was my place and that it became someone else's place too. So that's my, that's my sharing of my secret place. Oh, my goodness, Julie, what a story. So secret places don't need to be secret. They can be shared. I want to thank everybody for sharing what we have shared this morning. And I invite you as you leave today, as you go back to your lives, your homes, to think in a renewed way about whether you call it a secret place or a place you like to go for walks, you know, what place do you go to find that peace of wild things? We are blessed with living in this beautiful part of the world. I, I give thanks often for that. It's a good reminder. OK. 
carry this with you as you go. And maybe somebody will even come and tell me later that they climbed a tree. I, I want to take a moment and, um, and acknowledge that Oliver Peck is here with us today. Oliver, it's so nice to see you again. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you're here. And I hear you came last night for the, uh, yeah. the coffee house. Yeah. yeah. And it's wonderful to see you again. Well, thanks everyone for sharing your thoughts and what's on your heart in terms of your own place of peace. And to continue the theme of peace, the choir has for us one of my all time favorites, Dona Nobis Hachem. No, 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 Now we're going to try an experiment for our closing words. I, I waylaid several people here this morning and gave them a piece of paper and a number next to a part of the reading. So we're going to uh, try a totally unrehearsed uh, reading of um, a poem called Peace by the Pupils of the Lincoln School, which I got out of the back of our hymnal. And so 
let's try this. Everyone who has a piece, come up and let's try keeping our masks on, but when it's your turn, pull it down or take it off. It doesn't matter what order we're in because you, you know if you're number one. And yeah, we can just kind of make a little line here, oops, but not in the, in the beam of the, yeah. So how about right here? And so we're going to have number one read their little bit and then number two, et cetera. Let's see if we can pull this off. Okay. Peace means the beginning of a new world. It means that nations are friends. It means joy to the world. Peace is quiet and calm. It is rest. It is the silence after a storm. It is love and friendship. It is the world's dream of dreams. Peace brings comfort and happiness. It means the strong respect of the weak, the great respect of the small, the many respect the few. It is like spring after winter. It brings sunshine into the world. It is like sweet music after harsh sounds. The wise words of young people, thanks to the students of the Lincoln School. And now we will have the bell sound again.